Why should you trust the eyewitnesses of the resurrection? Let's talk about it as we recap yesterday's sermon for today's use. Well, first of all, Jesus really did die. The centurion stabs Jesus into the side and blood and water gushes out as a sign that his body already was dead. Jesus was dead. Um, the crucifixion was not just a normal execution. It was a shameful death reserved for the scum of the world. If you were a proper criminal, you were actually used for, for entertainment purposes in a Colosseum or something like that, right? So that was reserved for slave, for the non-humans. Jesus died this shameful death. And in, in Middle, Middle Eastern ancient times, a death like that was so shameful, people did not talk about it. There are no re, um, recounts of crucifixions except the ones from Jesus. And after that, the followers of Jesus who started to recount the crucifixions of martyrs. So it was such a shameful thing that even families would not talk about crucified people in their, fam in their families. It was, it was made to shame people to death. However, Christians gather around the crucified and risen Lord. That is a complete paradigm shift. How would you do that? Why would you do that, right? It does not make any sense, except if Jesus is really risen to, to life again. Number two, it is how there are no mourning signs among the disciples. Once the women come with the spices, which was the first time or in the last time you actually see people mourning for Jesus actively, and they realize that the body is not there, and Mary meets the risen Lord, this completely flips. The disciples have no mourning songs in the New Testament. And this would be very important because everybody who follows a leader and that leader dies in that time, especially, you would mourn the death. You would commemorate his heroic death. There is nothing that actually elevates the cross above the resurrection in the New Testament. Lastly, or let's add one or more, it's the women. Women are the first eyewitnesses and the story does not gloss over that. There, that was not to the advantage of the resurrection narrative if, you, if it was just a narrative for the first thousand, I don't know, thousand, eight hundred years maybe. So <laughs> if, if you plan this, right, if you want to make a story, then don't let the women see this first. Make, make it a heroic appearance of Jesus. Let me add one other one. Jesus is not showing up in a glorious, um, I don't know, just a heroic, um, vengeful way. That would have been the normal narrative of that time. He's meeting with them. He's eating with them. He's joyfully, um, you know, appearing in their community. He is doing this like nothing had happened, except he's still showing the wounds. So it, it, it does not make any sense, except if Jesus really rose again. He is not here, but he's risen, is one of the early Christian signals that they knew that Jesus was not dead anymore. He was alive. And he was, it was something that went beyond what we can explain with our normal understanding. Why do you seek the dead among the living? That was one of the questions the angel asks the women. And it's one of the questions that I, I, I think we need to ask ourselves as Christians. If we look for Jesus in the dead places, we will not find him. In dead religion, dead works, dead uh, activities, dead traditions, right? We need to find Jesus in the day-to-day, -day, in the community of the believers. The reason why they forgot what Jesus had told them Jesus had told him prior, before the cross, I will be killed. I will rise up again. Is that what they had seen? As Christians, as followers, oftentimes we forget what he has told us because of what we're seeing right now. Sometimes you hear something on Sunday and it just is amazing and faith drops into your heart. And then on Monday, you see things, you experience things that make you forget what you have heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you and I, we need to go back and need to learn how Jesus really is risen from the dead 
and make this a reality. Because if he's truly risen, then we have all the hope in the world. Amen. All right. These were a few pointers to the resurrection. There's probably more. There's a great book by Josh McDowell. It's short, but it's really, it's really clear on why the resurrection really did happen and what it really means. You and I, we live in the reality of a Jesus that is not dead, but is alive and well and at work in his church today. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week.